from the depth instant tutorial. You're watching Geomedism. This time I'm going to show you how to make a regular SeaWiz flag system. SeaWiz stands for closing weapon systems and uh, we're going to use APS to basically shoot down incoming shells. I already set up a system here as you can see, but I'm going to show you how to build a system similar to this one. To set up our SeaWiz system, we're going to make it on turret of course, and you need to decide what size of turret you want. Now I'm going to do a very small SeaWiz system, just because uh, it's often very auxiliary weapons, so they are often quite small. Uh, we are going to have a all-in-one local weapon controller as a backup, and we're going to have a closing weapon systems all-in-one as the main. So if we go in here, we set this to maximum priority, we go in here and uh, check that it's minimum priority. Very nice. So, if you make a turret that's larger than 3x3, I recommend you to armor yours. And if you make larger ones, I definitely recommend you to EMP insulate your uh, weapon controllers uh, by covering them in rubber. But this is the minimal size, we cannot fit this, so this is what we're going to do. To make the problem a tiny little bit smaller, and not make it disabled by a really small shell, we're going to add one surge protector here in the side so that eventual EMP damage, if it's really small, will just go down and go to this side instead of going to the weapon computers. Alright, so to set this thing up, we're going to actually begin with setting up some rules here. So we go into the local weapon controllers and select the main rule set. So we're gonna narrow down the ignore outside and set it to 30%. We are going to set a weight and we're going to set this at distance. So the things that are at minimum distance will be maximum and the things that are at the maximum distance, which is which we will set at 500, will be minimum. So we'll, we'll, we will be shooting at the thing that's the closest one. And the zero we are going to change to a 80. Then we're going to set ignore inside 0 to 90. We're going to first set up distance 0 to 90. So if it's between 0 and 90 meters from us, we will ignore the target. Then we're going to set up another weight value, which will, go, which will be a cluster size. And we're going to set a cluster to max and weight at max and weight at minimum. This will make it prefer basically clusters if they are close because this will be a flag system. So a firing piece followed by a AA 2 meter mantlet like that. Then we are going to get some coolers. Then we need some autoloaders and now we have two options. So we can either go with the belt fed autoloaders and this allows for faster firing speeds but longer reload speeds and you can't make this very safe. So in this tutorial we are going to go for the safe option and the safe option is autoloader 1 meter shells and this thing we can actually connect up some ejection defuses on which we are going to do. But uh, if you have the belt fed autoloaders, you cannot use the ejectors. The ejectors makes it so that if we get damaged, the shells from that autoloader will be ejected. If you don't have ejectors, basically if one of these get hits, the entire turret will blow up because the ammo stored into it will have some flak into it. So it will make all the damage that you wanted to deal to the enemy shells and it will deal it directly into your turret. So we're going to go with a sh safe option with ammo ejectors. But if you can't have ammo ejectors, um, or if you want really that faster reload speed, use belt feds. So the uh, ammo ejectors, we can place them here like that onto the outloaders. The outloaders get faster reload speed if we attach some ammo clips to them. So we are attaching some ammo clips to them. And to load these things, we of course need to have a couple of ammo intakes, just like that. Set it up to be a standard 60 
mm shell, so we will not change anything here. For this build, we are actually going to use an ammo controller. Uh, if we do use an ammo controller, um, we will waste some space, yes, but we will not need to set this thing up every time we are uh, spawning this turret. No, it will be automatically spawned and set up with a turret. And because we are lazy, we're going to set the optimal shell integrated into this turret. So how do we do the optimal shell to deal uh, damage against incoming shells? Well, it doesn't have to be very fast and it does need flak. So we use the flak head to get some uh, extra um, aerodynamic speed and we're going to add some flak warhead bodies. You can basically add flak warhead bodies all over the place. You can see this shell here. It's set to 200 and 23 meters per second and because you know it, it doesn't matter we might as well do this why not then we need another part here we need emergency ejection defuse because if we don't have this when we eject the shells when we get damaged we would basically also nuke ourselves so if you use ammo ejectors you will need an emergency ejector defuse on every shell otherwise you basically need that your ejection port is open so that the shells flying out can be just ejected without hitting anything the next thing we will need to do this setup is a timed fuse and the timed fuse you don't need to set anything up here uh, the, the uh, timed fuse seconds it doesn't matter we are going to add a uh, laser targeter and the laser targeter will basically set the uh, time to detonate automatically so we add a laser targeter here and we can set an offset time to before and after um, because we are always shooting at the shell that comes first and we are probably shooting at clusters we could probably set this ejection uh, this offset time to a slight positive value and then we could potentially deal damage to clusters but you don't need to change this actually it's usually fine as it is all right, so here we have our little shell. It's a flak shell. It's flak warhead time fuse emergency ejection defuse. Select uh, one of your ammo controllers and uh, assign this shell and assign to all intakes. Now you can check the stats on your turret and you can see that the auto loader limit is 112 RPM, but the cooling limit is much higher. So then we don't need to add more coolers. No, instead we could probably replace uh, like the bottom cooler here with a little recoil absorber because you can see that if we look at the stats here the recoil is uh, 68 per second and now the absorption is 189 per second which is well more than we need. If we don't have a recoil absorber it will get uh, inaccurate over time. So that should be a nice little setup here and now we need to set some barrels up and you might be tempted to use the heavy barrels but if you do this it will be kind of slower to move around so we, if we select the normal barrels it will be faster. If we go into this little thing here uh, select the uh, intakes and uh, look at this shell and assign the shell to well this piece and scroll down here you can see that the barrel length we need for uh, burning the fuel is this long and for base inaccuracy it's 2.5 uh, meters so if we see here the inaccuracy is 0 0.18 if we remove this it's 0 0.23 not a big difference if we want to we can basically make this be a pretty short barreled turret uh, which we actually will do so um, that is that if you would have some kind of cooling problems you could actually add a bore evacuator and as you can see here um, these coolers they are actually not needed to connect up the uh, um, to to connect up these outloaders because now the outloaders connect with each other so we can basically just uh, see here because it's like extra material 
we might as well remove some blocks here until the cooling limit is more close to uh, the outlier limit and now we have a more balanced system and here we have some free space we can fill up with anything um, for this thing we're just going to make it very simple for us and just add some extra stone um, for integrity and this is basically how to set up the seawiz cannon of course um, we will need to armor this thing up and the uh, turret base of this thing is very much unarmored so uh, you will of course need to make sure that the well we place this turret in in the hull is armored indeed and if you didn't know having ammo clips on both sides give us a reload uh, autoloader time bonus so uh, that is why we added it basically on the spaces where we clearly have like free space we can use whatever we want for we might as well add more um, ammo intakes which means that these particular ammo clips will reload faster and that might be good if we are coming in a situation where we need to uh, output sustained uh, fire so remember this base is three times three so do not make it any thicker than this uh, and um, of course don't remove your laser targeter and you can tweak the laser targeter if you tend to not uh, hit as many shots as uh, you are expecting to do now there can also be a good idea to invest in some heavy armor here because um, the front side of the turret will most likely face the enemy and it will take most of the beating in case you are indeed uh, shooting at the enemy. So we're going to fill up some heavy armor here and around this centerpiece we can add just normal metal. And there we have it, it's uh, armored up and everything. So let us make sure that god mode is on and we can spawn uh, some type of craft so that we know if it uh, shoots back or not and there we can see it indeed tries to shoot back on this little missile that's coming in here it may not be strong enough but it's uh, best in mass of course you do not only have one seawiz gun you do have several as i think i've explained in earlier tutorials it does indeed seem to do its job pretty well and it will try to deal damage to your enemy crafts whenever there are no incoming targets. Of course now there are and we shall now see it trying to shoot at incoming missiles. So save the little sub object um, if you think you done something half decent. And then you can try it out. This thing does only cost 6,000. So it's fairly cheap. We can spawn a, cup, spawn a couple of them and see if it works. And there we have it. A SeaWiz system. APS flag regular SeaWiz system. Here we have it. I hope this tutorial did help you. And if it did, please do check out my other tutorials in the uh, playlist we have loads of them and loads more are coming and you can also post your suggestions on what more tutorials you would want me to make in the instant tutorial playlist series in any case i hope you enjoyed this little video and uh, until next time this is your host jimmerism and we are signing out have a great one and bye bye.